Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 26. It's Serini Ancita. Of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast, as always, at the lovely Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. And if you don't know, that was Swahili. Swahili. I was had a request to do it in Swahili, so... By one of I our that. regular listeners, so we yes. uh, went ahead and did that for him. That was a one-time shot, though. Yeah, Swahili is not that easy. No, I had to watch a freaking YouTube video YouTube for video that to bullshit. Do it. <laughs> yeah. It's nice that I moved the microphone right when we were talking, and it made a loud noise. Yeah, yeah. that was great. You're we're pros. Total pro. We're total pro. And today pros. we are reviewing the Ezra Zion Je me vous. <laughs> this French. In the Corona size, 6 by 46 That's a Corona? That looks yeah. a little big for a Corona. It's a big Corona. Hmm. Not bad. Yeah, it's a beautiful band. Great beautiful looking cigar. packaging. It's yeah. a nice cigar or nice uh, presentation of the cigar. Mm-hmm. It's got a standard open foot. Um, looks like a cap's got two. Well, uh, yeah, that's a two. Not a triple cap, a double cap. But it looks yeah, that's good. what it looks like. It's got yeah. a good amount of sheen on it. The uh, pre smell is not just like smelling the actual cigar. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really uh, have a whole lot of smell to it. It's kind of barnyardy. It's not veiny at all. Yeah, kind of barnyardy, kind of a but it looks mean. tobacco. A it little looks spicy, mean. actually. If you smell the um, the foot, the foot, it's a little spicy. Now I, I will admit that I have had the Jamie Vu, but not in the Corona size. So I'm looking forward to trying it. I have not had this. Is my first, so I need a cutter and a lighter, please. Cold draw is nice. So we've just lit and cut our Jamie Vus, and uh, first draw on this is a. Uh, but yeah, it's got a lot of spice. Yep, it does. And for those smoking with us, hopefully you were able to find it in a Corona and. We can all share the same experience. That would be fantastic. And we are pairing today, right? Mm-hmm. With a new product that's not available yet, but it's available to us because we're special. We get the good stuff. Yep, one of our buddies, one of the uh, the many um, buddies of the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge is here today, Davis, and he has his own homebrew. Davis Howell. Has been off and on employed here for four years, five, five years. Five. Wow. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the show, Davis. This will be the first time you've ever heard our podcast. Thanks. Uh, very funny. Yeah. yeah. It, it, but as very as true. fact is, but uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing it. Uh, so glad to be here with you. And we are uh, going to be drinking the, uh, the O-Shot Irish Stout uh, by, uh, I'm calling my company the Autocorrect Brewing Company. So don't steal that name from him, people. He's just getting started. Yeah, that would be appreciative. Yes, be nice to the guy. So you want to explain how O-Shot came into being and why it's connected to uh, autocorrect? Uh, I actually have my friend uh, Alexis to thank for that. She uh, used to try and tell people that she was going to a local bar called uh, Sherlock's. Um, and uh, every time she would try and type that in, her phone would correct to uh, sidekicks. Mm. Uh, and so while I was trying to uh, actually tell a friend, uh, say, oh shit, at something, it automatically corrected to O oh, shot and I sent it before I realized it and I said screw it that's what I'm gonna okay. call this first first brew very clever I'm, and I haven't had a sip yet have you had a sip I just had a sip yeah okay let me try it's it. yummy so yeah autocorrect is uh, famous for that every time I try and say fuck something on my iPhone it's like duck something so oh yeah, yeah it's, it's like a fuck nice, it it's like uh, duck it yeah it's got a nice uh what's the word I'm looking for it's very bocky is it a bock uh, it's a stout, uh, it's so that, okay. that initial flavor kind of gives you a... It's got a clean a, finish, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, it does yeah. have a clean finish, yeah. It does have a nice finish. Uh, it's got kind of a, a very simple woody taste. Uh, I wish I'd added a little bit more malt, give it a little more flavor, mm-hmm. uh, a little more lingering. But uh, this is, as as you said, my, my very first brew, so yes. um, I think it turned out real well for uh, a first time. So far, and, and you yeah, did it's it. tasty, and, man. And uh, what makes it even more tasty is that it's an extract, and we you wouldn't expect your first try on it being an extract it, to have as much flavor as it does. Yeah, a lot of time those extract brews, you know, first trying, uh, they they're a little bit tricky. They're not overly overly tricky. Uh, not like doing whole grain and whatnot, which is uh, usually produces a more prominent flavor. But um, it, I'm I'm glad I really got the flavor out of this that uh, that did come with it. So I'm pretty uh, pretty satisfied with what uh, what came. Kudos so, so what, far. Yeah. What size did you? make i mean how much did you make? I, I did about five gallons so just okay. just a hair over five gallons uh produced uh we're, we're drinking out of 22 ounce bottles here so produced uh, 24 of those nice nice how many good. you have left uh after this about 10 oh okay that's, that's why he's so good. generous today is he needs to bottle tomorrow so we brought a whole bunch so we could finish him off yeah exactly yeah, so, actually. Don't, use the so don't break his bottles <laughs> 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 yeah. try not to yeah, yeah that's, try uh, not to it goes really good with the cigar it does yeah the cigar is fantastic so is the I mean, it's they're both really good it's a nice oh, balance between the two yeah too bad so, you're not smoking the same cigar davis well 
We won't mention the cigar Davis is smoking. Hey. <laughs> so the Jemmy Vu, we didn't cover the info on this cigar, um, is a grade A Nicaraguan tobacco aged five to six years. Wrapper is a 99 Cuban seed 2007 crop Corojo. Hmm. The binder is a 99 Cuban seed 2007 crop Corojo. The Binder number two, there's two binders on oh, this. Oh, okay. The 98 Cuban seed 2006 crop Criollo. Criollo? There mm-hmm. you go, Criollo. I always say that wrong. And then the filler is a 99 Cuban seed 2007 crop Medio Tiempo Viso and Lajero. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, going to have some, some, some kick to it. Yeah. Um, oomph to it, yeah. Yeah. And it is, uh, it is delicious. Corona 46 by 6. And so far, so good. Very tasty. Mm-hmm. We've I been, messed up my burn, but yeah, my burn's catch not up. my burn's not great either. Um, but it'll catch up. Yeah, because you know when you're going to do a cigar review, it's probably a good idea to not have lighters readily available like we. Yeah, did at we the just beginning. we had the what two lighters both had no butane, Nothing. and then yes. we had to light with cedar spill and nah, that was a pain. Oh well. Retro hell on that is spicy. Yeah, so far, so much better than the CAO hurricane from last week. Yes, yes, for sure. I figured after our fiasco last week, we go with the Corona because we know we're probably going to get a good draw. Yeah, true, and, and a lot of flavor. So tell us about tell us a little bit about I'm not even drunk yet and I'm already slurring words here. Tell us mm-hmm. a little bit about the process with you uh, making this brew. You had some help from uh, some other friends of ours, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the guys at uh, Four Bullets Brewing Company, which is going to be uh, established real soon and opening up uh, out uh, in in Wiley, uh, help uh, Drew help me do this. Um, and uh, it's it's not an overly complicated process until you get to the the sterilizing part. Yeah. Um, essentially, what it is is you have a a small canister of of the extract. Uh, you boil water and then you put that in there. Add your malt. Um, if you want to, I, I didn't for this particular one. I did on my second batch. Uh, you can add hops, and uh, uh, you can you can be a little generous, or you can be you know thrifty with them, depending on how you want it to turn out. Um, and then once all that's done, it's uh, just kind of putting it into a bucket, uh, a food grade bucket, of course. You know, you can get, right. uh, you can buy them at Not home a paint bucket. <laughs> no, no, you can't do it with a Home Depot bucket. Okay. Certainly can't. Certainly can't do there. Um, and then it's a matter of just getting it uh, cooled down, and then it's kind of a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. Um, I have to let it sit and ferment for a week, uh, then you bottle it and let it sit for another two weeks, and uh, next thing you know, you're drinking uh, fresh cold beer. That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, how much of your creativity went into this? I mean, you didn't just follow the packet straight up and without any creativity, I'm sure. Not, not you know, straight, just following instructions. Right. Uh, I mean, you can throw in more malt or less malt. Uh, mm-hmm. You can do it with no malt whatsoever. Of course, if you do that, you're not going to have a very thick beer. It comes out at about 3%. I added two pounds of malt, knocks it up to about uh, 5%, and okay. uh, gives it a little more body and flavor. Um, the next batch, I'll probably do like more like four pounds of malt, give it a lot more um, a lot more thickness, give it some more body. Um, but uh, uh, with extract brewing, there's not a whole lot you can deviate. Um, but you can do uh, – there's a couple of things you can adjust to, okay. to give it the flavor you want. When you had, uh, said earlier you didn't think it had much of an aftertaste, but I like the aftertaste. I oh, excellent. Really I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I mean, it's just a – Maybe, maybe it's because with the cigar that's adding some extra flavor in my palate. But yeah, yeah, I think this definitely goes well with a nice dark cigar like uh, like those. Um, but uh, – yeah, it's it's not uh, not an overly lingering uh, aftertaste like some of the other beers you know I've I've mm-hmm. had, and uh, so it does it does come on strong and then uh, has a, a very smooth, easygoing finish. Okay, nice. So you said it's a stout. What's the uh, the head on it like when you pour it into a glass? Is it a pretty good head on there? Or? Uh, it can. Um, you you kind of have to. I like I said, I need a little more malt. So if yeah. you pour it. Uh, you know, directly into the glass, it'll actually rouse the yeast and whatnot, and give you a, a thicker head. Uh, but it does have a nice, nice brown head on it, and so you can uh, you can really get that. But if you pour it, you know, the conventional way where you tilt the glass and everything, it actually comes out a little thin. Yeah. But uh, okay. like I said, first try, I'm I'm pretty happy with what no, I got. Very good yeah, stuff. Yeah, very good. Yeah. How how I mean how how into the process was Drew with it? Was he stepping you through the whole thing, or did you pretty much? Get well, he's been learning guy. with him already. Right? Yeah, I've been mm-hmm. learning with him, and uh, you know, the part of the process is uh, he did help me with a, a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, I did most of it, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, pour it in a boiling pot and you know stir. Right. Uh, and then you just have to make sure you watch it. I did have a couple of boilovers, which uh-huh. are uh, which are a pain, <laughs> as you can imagine. Can imagine. Just uh, 
trying to clean it up. That's like someone dropping their cigar and it's, I have to go clean up the ashes. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it's like, except for you got to scrub out your stove. now. You just got beer all over it. So if you can imagine uh, what my uh, apartment looks like after (laughs) I've uh, tried to bottle and the entire kitchen is covered in beer. And your lasagna tastes like beer because you baked it in the oven that you spilled beer into. Well, I do it on the stove. Oh, you do it in the the oven? Yeah, I I totally bake my lasagna (laughs) in the same pot. You said oven. You said oven. You did I say oven? Oh, you said oven. Okay, no, I meant do it. Do it on top of the stove. The okay. lasagna goes in the oven. Thank you. I know that. And you're doing this in an apartment. Is there like a smell associated with brewing beer? It does, and it's absolutely wonderful. Like you really get the smell of the hops and the malt and everything, and it it kind of absorbs the apartment for like a day or two. Where your neighbors uh, like, what the hell? No, it's not that overpowering. Um, it doesn't, you know, seep through the walls or something to where the whole neighborhood can smell it, but. Uh, you know, you'll walk into the apartment and someone can definitely go, you've been brewing beer, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, gotcha. That's okay. cool. That is really cool. Yeah. I've never even thought about doing that. I have I'm no not patient enough of- for things like that. I'm really not. Especially to keep it sterilized and stay on top of that. I'm yeah. bored. I'm out. Oh, it's a huge pain. I'm out. Yeah. Everything I'll just run down the street and get a six pack. That's what I'll do. My dad uh, has a buddy of his in, uh, in Austin, uh, actually outside of Austin, That's a, it's got a neighbor of his that's a farmer. Mm-hmm. And... He's like, I'm going to grow some tobacco. So he just grew a field of tobacco, not knowing what he was going to do with it, just out, just to see if he could do it. Now right. he's got this whole field of tobacco, and he's mm-hmm. calling me. He's like, I got all this tobacco. It's ready to go. I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, I have no freaking idea yeah, what exactly. to do with that. I'm go like, online. What are, you, what are you growing the tobacco for? It's in Texas. Who's going to smoke that? He's Texas like, tobacco. Maybe just yeah. you know, cut it for cigarettes or something. I have no idea. But We have a rep that makes his own cigar. Literally, yeah. he grows them in his back, grows the tobacco in his backyard. Yeah. The different wrapper, binder, and filler, and makes his own cigars. He only See, can make like four at a time, but he makes yeah. I, I I got a whole bunch of information online. I sent it to him, and I'm gonna you know check up with him and see what they do. But it can, might be kind of cool if they would be. Yeah, yeah. If we can get our own cigar rolled. And there's the Texas and they, cigar. They know they know cigar rollers. They, there's a whole bunch of Cuban rollers over at this place called Babalu Cigar, mm-hmm. which is a they do their own cigars. Yeah. in Austin. And as I told him, I was like, you know, people over there, get those ladies to roll it for you. See what they can come up with. And they'll know more than I will about right. what's going to work yeah, and what's you not. You just smoke them. You don't build them. Exactly. All right. But I wouldn't mind learning. That'd be, I think it'd be kind of cool, cool to learn it. Yeah. So, Davis, good job, buddy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, now you have to listen to this podcast and you have to tell other people to listen to at least the first segment so they can hear your dusky voice. <laughs> dusky voice. I will be certain to do that. <laughs> I will listen to my section <laughs> over and over voice. again. <laughs> oh man! So, um, working with Drew and those guys over at Four Bullets, what's the uh, the end game here? Are you planning on having the beer available over there at their brewery um, for sale, or uh, with mine? I'm not really with mine. I'm not really so sure. Uh, essentially, I'm just kind of gonna be brewing for myself, my friends. Uh, I like to share what I create and whatnot. Uh, their setup over there is, you know, they're going to be able to brew. They're setting up with a three barrel system, which will do essentially six kegs, uh, Mm -hmm. at a time. And they're going to have a setup with a beer and wine license so that they can uh, fill growlers, sell six packs, as well as if you want to, you can always stop off for a pint. Uh, they'll do Saturday tours and whatnot. And they're hoping to get running in a couple of months here. Very cool. Way cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody needs to be on the lookout for O-Shot beer from Autocorrect Brewery. Brewery. Or distillery brewery. Yeah. What is it? It would just be a brewery. <laughs> okay. You're not going to distill stuff? <laughs> no, no. I don't think I'm going to move over. We're not going to make a bourbon together or something? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But that's a whole other process <laughs> yeah. with uh, much bigger equipment. So that, <laughs> that would uh, take a while. I can't do it on my stove. Yeah, that'd be tough. Need some barrels and shit for that's that. That's what the yeah, oven's exactly. for. That's what the evidence was. was a callback. That was a callback joke, Davis. You're supposed to pay attention and laugh at I jokes. didn't hear what you said. Oh, I said, we can use your oven. Oh, there you the go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Use the oven, of course. Yeah. Well, Davis, thanks a bunch. And like, like we said, uh, be on the lookout for Autocorrect All right, Brewery. Thanks. Oh, shot. It is tasty and goes well with the Ezra Zion. Which, by the way, is not as peppery as it was at the beginning, but it's chock full of spice and flavor and yep. a hint of cocoa. Maybe because the mix with the beer, I'm not sure, but I am getting some. I'm cocoa getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of hay um, from the I think from the wrapper. Mm. It's just got a kind of a hayish taste to me. Really, I'm not getting any hay because yeah. I don't like hay, and I would not like it. I don't mind hay. It depends, yeah. but yeah. um, but it is really spicy. Um, honestly, between this and the tantrum, I'd probably take the tantrum. Well, yeah, the tantrum's balls to the wall, and we're going to review that at the Ezra Zion event we're going to have here on August 28th. Which is two weeks from today, Brandon. We just found this out like an hour ago. I did not know that. Nope. So, Always uh, the last to know. <laughs> You're just the talent. 
Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that puts up with your shit. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. All right, so we're going to take a little break. We're at the end of the first third here on the Ezra Zion Jimmy Vu, and we'll be right back. Car 55, this is Dispatch. We have a 211 in progress in your area. Please respond. Dispatch, this is Car 55. We are in the vicinity and on our way. Did you say this was a 211? Yes, 211 robbery in progress. Hmm, 211. That reminds me of that great cigar by Esteban Carreras, the 211. Man, I could go for one of those right now. Uh, okay, whatever. We have a farmer in the area whose goats are getting stolen. And this is where it gets weird, saying it's a chupacabra. A chupacabra? Are you kidding me? Man, that's another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. Whoa, hold on now. Let's keep our focus here. I mean, this guy called in a 187 on his prize-winning goat, Mary. 187? You're killing me here. Yet another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. I just think this guy sounds crazy. Yeah, you might just want to call in a 5150 and call it a day, you know what I mean? 5150, that's it. You call a paddy wagon, I'm turning around and going to the Calypso Cigar Shop in Richardson for an Esteban Carreras cigar. Hey, that sounds great. Can I join you? Absolutely. Esteban Carreras cigars. It'd be a crime not to smoke them. All right, everybody, we're back for the second third of the Ezra Zion Jamais Vu. It is not French, but it has a French name. I don't know what Jamais Vu means, what do you mean? I think I love you, or not that oh, I love you, but I, I love you, know you too, I mean. Andy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love everybody. You're just a lovable guy. If they're listening to the show right now, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> All of our listeners, Randy wants to love you. <laughs> In a special way. We have a couple of shout-outs. Uh, we John, do have a couple of shout-outs. Yeah. John Langley from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, all right. Robert Trotter, who I don't remember now, but it's a Texas town like Abilene. I will find out where it is, and we'll give him a shout-out at the end. When I figure out where he's from, I forgot. And as always, Kirk is giving us a shout-out this week yep. on uh, some of the podcasts. Yeah, uh, and then... Uh, Shagwa from uh, Stogie yep, Friends is always right. commenting on the on the videos that I put up there at Stogie Friends. So and, thanks, everybody. Uh, I think Big Mama or Mama something, some Mama Cass, not Mama Cass. It's Big Mama, Mama. Cass. Mama, Mama loves you. I don't know her name. I'll have remember. to look we'll, it up. We'll have to look her, her name. Yeah, up too. but she's on uh, Stogie Friends as well. And she okay. likes the likes the podcast as well. Right. Holly, Holly Zimmerman and uh, Jeff Kershauer. Kershauer, yeah. Yep. Kershauer. No, Jeff Kershauer. 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 Sorry, Jeff. Also a friend of ours from uh, Facebook land. So um, we're going to go ahead and go on with our awesome segment that we've been doing uh, the second week in a row here. It's the Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. Because of our sponsorship with Esteban Carreras. Yes, it is awesome. We are now sponsored. It is so cool. At least the segment is sponsored. Yep. So cool. here comes the Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. All right. So the Creature Feature this week is Piranha Conda. Piranha Conda. What a steaming pile of shit that movie was. <laughs> Piranha Conda. That, that song. song was so bad. God. Oh Jesus. my God. I don't even know how to begin. And, and Davis is still sitting here. Davis, you won't believe who the main actor was in this movie. Do tell. It's, it's a well known guy. Michael Madsen Michael is Madsen. in Piranha really? Conda. Yep. That's Reservoir. how far his career has Reservoir followed. Dogs and Kill Bill fame, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it seems like and, uh, he's kind of taking a drop off. Yeah, hasn't he? he has. I, I would say that it's not really acting because he's pretty much just speaks his lines. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't act one second he of that movie. Doesn't he just bring recites lines. Anything to the role at all? No. And, and uh, uh, so the premise is: is there's this uh, mutated creature that is mutation between an anaconda snake and a piranha, and it's really just like this huge giant snake, like it's over a hundred feet long and probably twenty feet in girth. Yep, uh, with just a little tiny, tiny piranha face. Yep, it's, and it's <laughs> it's the worst CGI ever. It almost looks like a cartoon. Yeah, it looks like Pete's Dragon. Remember that from I the? I think I think the <laughs> the, 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 the piranha conda doesn't look as bad as the deaths fr- associated oh, to the piranha conda. The blood, yeah, he 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 lunges at him and, and grabs him in the mouth, and all he sees is this explosion of blood, like a misting blood yeah. cloud. It's like whenever he whenever <laughs> he like, bites people, something in his. In the way he bites them, turns all their blood into a like a red mist. Yeah, exactly. So there's no CGI blood; it's just CGI mist, right. and it kind of lingers on the shots. And it's just, it's it's just freaking. Did they at least horrible. explain how this this creature was created? If they it's, did. It's, I didn't pay attention. It's supposedly like uh, Michael Madsen basically plays a professor scientist, scientist, scientist yeah. which is hilarious in and of itself. 
who's researching this thing and he thinks he knows where the where the nest is and he's going to go get one of these eggs and take it back for research and it's supposedly this thing that like it hibernates for 50 years and then it comes out every once in a while right. and, and it doesn't last very long and then yeah. it goes back into hibernation okay. yeah. I'm really glad you said eggs just because I was really worried about there was going to be some kind of procreation scene no, it just would be the oh. and so yeah. what happens is <laughs> Michael Madsen kidnaps an egg from the nest and he comes across this film crew this, that's the other thing this this uh, film crew is. I guess this took place in Hawaii is that what I figured yeah, out yeah it's supposed to take place in Hawaii, in Hawaii. yeah and uh, so this film where there are both piranhas and anacondas. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so at least they got the geographical location correct. But what they did, although it looks like it shot was shot in the back lot of Universal Studios or something, because there's the same tabs. place where G Gilligan's Island was yeah. shot. It looks like almost because yeah. every every time they say that they're in the jungle, uh -huh. like we're in the secluded section of the jungle where people are never coming, and we see this great thing. There's like a path, you know, right. it's like practically gravel, well path. worn, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's and just, uh, I forgot where I was going, but he's. Uh, so anyway, so he uh, he kind of, film crew some film crew that's it. This film crew is filming a slasher movie, and it's obviously like a sequel. So like, I think it was something three, whatever the slasher movie was. Yeah. And uh, the acting in there, you know, I heard a long time ago from an actor that the toughest thing to do as an actor is to pretend you're acting. So it was really tough for these people because they can't act to begin with. And now they're having to pretend that they're acting in another movie. It yeah. was horrible. It's like an actor's inception, you know, yes. but in a really horrible, <laughs> shitty way. <laughs> it begs the question, which one would you rather watch the movie within the movie or this? The movie, movie within the movie, the movie without within the a movie doubt. probably would have been more entertaining without because the movie within the movie, everybody was in bikinis and they were getting killed and stuff, which right. I would rather watch I'm in, than I'm into that. a piranha Now the plot of this movie is they're filming this movie and the money dries up, the well dries up, they can't finish the movie. But these, I don't know what you would call them, uh, kidnappers, mm -hmm. decide they're going to kidnap the movie crew and hold them hostage because the, they somehow the kidnappers know that this particular movie crew was bought by a big, large movie studio and they right. suddenly have money. Right. So while it's a B movie, they can you know obviously ask for like $3 million for right. you know And get ransom. this movie. And so what happens is the Piranaconda can sense where its egg is. So since Michael Madsen's now connected with the film crew, the Piranaconda is chasing them. Now this thing, now the, oh, I also must mention the once lovely Rachel Hunter was in this movie. And I do heavy emphasis on the once lovely. Age has not done her well. And uh, her acting was never good, but it was even worse than Michael Madsen's. And uh, she's part of the kidnap group. And her death might be the stupidest one. Because for the first time, the Pranaconda didn't... Like, when he would kill them, it's like down to their shoes. The bloody mist, and then you'd see their shoes laying there. Yep. She he must not. She must have been too big for him or something, because he, he could only eat, like, half of her. Yeah. But Clearly, uh, this thing didn't have a foot fetish or anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, have, I, have, I made a list of the 10 things wrong with Pranaconda, and it turned into a list of, I think, 15 things. But I just did this while I was watching the movie. First thing is, Michael Madsen is a world-renowned professor. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Number yeah. two, bad digital effects. I mean, bad digital effects. Mm -hmm. Really bad. Number three, Professor Madsen's crew dies in like the first five minutes of the movie, and he looks like he's worried he left the lights on at home. He's like, that, <laughs> yeah, that's no as, concern that's at all. That's as, much, as yeah. concerned as he They looks. die, and he watches from the side, and he's like, huh. huh. Well, I guess i got to go walk off now. Yeah, and then uh, at some point, there's a girl that's uh, on the movie crew that is looking for a light meter. She's like, where's the light meter? I don't know. I'll go find it. She goes and looks for the light meter. Piranaconda attacks her, bites her leg off in one scene, magically reappears right. in the next, right. and then it's gone again. It's like, wow, okay, just not even trying. Uh, there was a stunt guy who worked on the movie that was supposed... He became one of the main actors. He's the guy that's going to save the day. Yeah, and he's apparently a better actor than Michael Madsen at this point, which is sad. Uh, <laughs> Rachel Hunter looks like 10 miles of shit and for some reason now looks like Rod Stewart, who she was married to. Um, Rod Stewart might look better than her. Yeah, all the hot chicks die without getting naked. That's number seven. Uh, number eight, the best actors were the Piranaconda. Uh, number nine, everybody walks paths in the jungle, even though they're supposed to be in a hidden away place. Right. All the paths have gravel and shit on them. Number ten, the director gets shot in the foot, doesn't seem to be hurt uh, at all no. until like pretty much the last segment right. of the movie where right. he needs to be hurt because right. he's trying to get away from the Piranaconda. Um, pistol whipped bad guy apparently has a jaw of steel. He gets pistol whipped in nothing. <laughs> it's like he's like, <laughs> but there's a Piranaconda, boss, and it's just bad. The bad Mexican accents were also really bad. Um, Blasting caps don't blow up when you throw them on the ground. <laughs> Do you remember that little yes, plot point? Yes. There was a 
the 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 guy apparently this they needed a guy who did pyrotechnics on a horror movie for some right. reason I don't know why <laughs> right yeah for a slasher movie you definitely need pyrotechnics and they have the the obligatory um you know uh what do they call that uh, foreshadowing where the mm. the stunt guy's talking to the guy who he's like what are those he's like oh those are blasting caps and if you throw them on the ground they just blow right up he's like really and he's like oh don't do it ha 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 and it's like of course too- you know that that's how they're gonna try to kill the pranaconda yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and oh, just just and, bad and so they. So there's this scene where they're they're going to do like the rant. Well, they're discussing ransom type situation, whatever. The the bad guys and the good guys are facing off, and Pranaconda shows up. So now they're all fighting together for a brief moment. And they're sh- shooting machine guns at this thing, and you don't see any inkling where the bullets go. You just see shooting. And it doesn't harm the Pranaconda at all. Mm. It can just bounce right off him. The bulletproof Pranaconda, I like it. Exactly. Yep. And they mention it later. One guy's like, we were shooting bullets at that thing and it was bouncing off like it had Kevlar. Yeah. Well, show it bounce off. <laughs> exactly. At least there one or two that shows it bounce off. <laughs> yeah. Nothing bounced off anything. Now, about the only thing I could say, I had a list of things that were right with Pranaconda. Uh, girls were in bikinis most of the time, which was and that great. one was really hot. Yeah, the main, the movie star girl, yeah. the B-movie star yeah. girl, she was hot. Uh, the script supervisor in a bikini was nice. Uh, mm-hmm. Bikini girl was too hot for the dorky guy. Yeah. Um, but she wasn't really hot, though. She no, she had a nice rack. That was about yeah. all she had. And then a uh, hot botanist were also nice. Now, yeah. in the middle of this movie, <laughs> for no apparent reason, they have this like subplot where there's these three hot girls who are looking for this orchid. I thought it was oh, going to come yeah. into play yeah, later. Exactly. I was like, well, this Never has to be foreshadowing. Like, maybe they can, maybe this thing's deadly and the piranha kind of eats it and it kills I have no idea. But they're looking for this orchid, and they find it, and they're like, oh, my God, this orchid only springs up once every hundred years, and I'm not going to leave without it. And then the piranha con- kind of comes and kills them. And so it's like, why is that scene in the movie? Yeah, had no purpose of being in the movie other no than pur- to extend the length of the movie. Add, well, add to the death count. Everybody loves a random death scene. I mean, of course, you got to have them in movies like this. It's the, uh, yeah, you got to lift the body count, man. Uh, exactly, exactly. That's all it's there for. But uh, poor Michael Madsen. Poor, poor Michael so Madsen. So we saw that it was a... Million dollar budget, so I'm assuming he got half of that because would, <laughs> they would, didn't spend anything else. On I would that think movie. he probably got half a million. Rachel Hunter probably yeah, got, probably got like 100, 150. 100, 150, and then the rest went to whatever pyrotechnics and CGI, CGI and stuff like that. But I don't even really think there was to like turn out their pockets for the change or whatever. For that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was terrible. It was so And then, bad. you know, the hot chick at the end, because she, she's the movie star of the movie, mm. of the inner movie. And she, you know, so she's rude and snobby. She's a typical, stereotypical star. Well, then she decides she wants to do something good. So she wants to be the one that runs back to the van to pick up these pyrotechnics. And the guy's like, no, I'll go. And she says, uh, no, let me finally do something good. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we know she's not going to Of course, she gets, like, she gets the one that gets bit in half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's snapped uh, in half. Then what's the favorite line? You got to say the great line from the movie. <laughs> the great line? He texted me. He said, "Greatest line ever." The stuntman. Yeah, the stuntman. The hot line. chick that's uh, he's that's, that's interested in him says to him, "You know, don't go back there." Don't. He's like, "I'm a stuntman. It's my job." <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I'm a stuntman. It's, it's what, what I, I do. do. That's what he said. Even better. <laughs> just, Even better. Just horrible. Just oh horrible. man. So uh, abhorrent movie that I, I you know. God, I hope people didn't watch that. I'm sure they. Watched it a lot on mm-hmm. sci-fi because it's obviously made for a sci-fi channel. And right. This is, this is clearly something you want to turn into a drinking game. I've got oh, some, yeah. I've got some yeah. buddies that do that kind of thing. I'm that would be a drinking this. game movie, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Well, we had a lot of uh, comments and compliments on our Creature Feature mm-hmm. segment from Esteban Carrera, so hopefully you enjoyed that one. <laughs> yeah, go watch Piranaconda. Just, just for to, laughs and giggles. Just and get really shit-faced drunk. And watch it. <laughs> Or if you're in California, smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> or Colorado. We or Colorado, Colorado, yeah. Colorado, yeah. And watch Piranha Condi. You will laugh your ass off. It's great. And feel don't feel in bad for way. Michael. Don't feel bad for Michael Madsen. Apparently, he's a poet now. He has several yes. books that have been published, right. and they're very well. He's very well um, thought of in that and subculture. It sucked, the, it sucked the acting gene right out of his roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it really did. So <laughs> <laughs> that uh, finishes today's Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. Esteban Carreras Cigars, super premium cigars at a great price. They're scary good. So what do you think of the uh, the uh, Ezra Zion so far? I love it, don't you? Mm-hmm. That finishes the second third of the Ezra Zion. Jamie Vu will be right back for the last segment. All right, we're back for the last segment of today's podcast. We're reviewing the Ezra Zion Jamais Vu. And going along with the Esteban Carreras Creature Feature, we started to think about, you know, Michael Madsen. 
was a great actor at some point. Yeah, was in, and a know, big star. A, a Hollywood movies and, and just kind of fell by the wayside. So we started to come up with a list of actors and actresses who just kind of fell off the that face That had the, the same thing yeah. happen to them. And, you know, what was his last important role? Kill Bill? Probably Kill That's Bill. That's got to be his last important role. Yep. Because I've seen him in nothing but direct-to-video stuff since then. And some of them, to be fair, haven't been bad, but his career has just gone down the toilet. So I came up with a few, and I'll see what uh, Brandon came up with. Val Kilmer. Yeah. Definitely. He's straight to video now. He was huge in the 90s. And now he's just huge. Yes. <laughs> Although got... making somewhat of a comeback with the one-man play he's doing where he plays Mark Twain, he's getting really good reviews for it, but that's not helping his film career by any means. No, no, no. Tom Sizemore. in 2006. He did what? Deja Vu. Yeah, but that wasn't a very big part, but that was a big movie, but still, that's seven years ago. Yeah, that's true. Tom Sizemore, who just killed his career. Yeah, he was a drug. That was a drug thing, though. I mean, he's but he was so he was the, one of the biggest, best character actors there for a long time. Yep, he did a lot of great movies. Eric Roberts. Yeah. Don't know if he was ever a huge star, but he was in A-list movies, big budget movies. Mm-hmm. And what's shocking about him, and I'm going to tie him in with another person. Eric Roberts, of course, is Emma Roberts' father, and she's one of the hottest new things in Hollywood. You'd think that would help his career, because look what happened to Angelina Jolie and John Voight. John Voight was in that category. He was someone who was direct-to-video movies, wasn't making anything, mm. hadn't even heard of him in years. Yep. Found out Angelina Jolie's daughter, boom, he started getting big roles again. Yep. It's not working for Eric Roberts. Now, to be fair, he was in the first Expendables as the bad guy. Yeah, but, but again, that's, it's but a that's small... still post-Angelina Jolie being famous, yeah. though. I'm talking about um, Eric, oh, Roberts, Eric Roberts. Oh, Eric Roberts. yeah, that's right. And, of course, his sister is, you know, Julia Roberts. So right. And she's family. on the list, but on a separate list. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the people that are flopping. Christian Slater. Yeah, he fell God, he fell, he fell probably the hardest. And uh, one of my favorites, and I'm kind of disappointed, but Luke Wilson has definitely fallen into the direct-to-video thing. Yep. He was in Death of a, Death at a Funeral. Decent-sized role in that. But, man, you got to go back to... Old school. Old school. Yeah. But now, he had some big, small parts, if that makes any sense, in, like, Blades of Glory, Anchorman. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Henry you know, Poole is here was good. Henry Poole's, yeah. but that's a direct-to-video movie, that, but it was a great right, movie. You're right, you're right. I thought Wendell Baker's story was a great movie, but it was a direct-to-video thing. Yep. So that's sad. You got any? Oh, I got a ton. Wesley Snipes is oh, a big definitely. one. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And uh, he, you know, his fall from grace happened before the whole IRS thing. Yeah, I mean, he basically did. was, you know, right at the end of Blade Two, he started slipping. Mm-hmm. Blade Three, he was kind of a second player. He wasn't even really the big star in that. And he was offered the role in, in the Blade TV series, but he felt he was too big at that time, so he turned it down. Yep. Probably wishes he'd have done it, even though the show only lasted a year. It was still have been another paycheck. Exactly. Would probably would have helped him with his with IRS, IRS issues. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Randy Quaid. Oh, definitely. But batshit crazy. So yeah, yeah I mean that doesn't help. But yeah. he was a uh, he was you know. He wasn't ever a really big star, but he was one of those character actors that just always got a lot of roles. And and he lit up the screen when he came yeah. on, you know. Uh, probably Brokeback Mountain's his last big role. Yeah. Uh, of course, he was great in the Christmas vac- you know, the vacation movies. But yeah. But yeah. But yeah. Meanwhile, his brother's career was flying high. Yep. Lindsay Lohan, a big one, obviously. I'm self-imposed. But yeah. So, still. Amanda Bynes, also batshit crazy. Yeah. What is she so. doing? I don't, she's uh, on the mess house, house arrest. I know. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Along with Lindsay Lohan, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Emilio Estevez. Yeah. A big when one. has he even done anything? Yeah. Besides, uh, he was on that one episode of High Your uh, not High Your Mother. Um, the show is Two and a Half Men. Two and a Half Men. Yeah. Yeah, he has to beg his brother for uh, <laughs> for parts now. <laughs> yeah. Now to be fair, he does direct movies. Yeah, he does. on occasion, but he just right. he's not on screen anymore. Right. Um, Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He was always big, direct to video. Almost. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> he had a big run in the late 80s, early yeah, 90s. The 80s. He, he had a big, uh, Under Siege was a huge yeah, movie. Huge Under Siege movie. 2 did good, even though it was a piece of crap. It's one with Michael Caine over the oil fields. That movie yeah. did a... On Deadly Ground or whatever. Yeah, that movie did a crap lot of money. Yeah, so he was still making some money, but he just trailed off, got fat, and stopped doing it. I saw movies. him in a direct to video, low budget zombie movie. Mm. Something darkness, I can't remember. But anyway, it was about this portion of town that had been quarantined because they isolated the zombie virus and this part of town was was military zone you couldn't come in or out because that's where the zombies were and he led this little ragtag team going around shooting the zombies being which, a badass which know? leads into the next one on my list Dolph Lundgren <laughs> who is also in a direct-to-video zombie yeah. movie that takes place in the future and he has a robot sidekick that helps him fight the zombies <laughs> well that's good to have help it always helps to have someone along the you know along the path with yeah. you Jean-Claude Van Damme, also a big one that, that trailed off well, hardcore. Yeah. 
uh, around yeah, the he, same time as he Steve turned Zuko. down Expendables one because his role wasn't important. Enough. Well, it wasn't deep enough. Yes. No, his role was not deep enough. Which right. which and then he was in Expendables two where he had maybe three lines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he needed the money. And he wore sunglasses the whole time because his eyes look like shit now. So he's got big bags under his eyes. This is a big one, and this was a sad one because I liked this guy, Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. Good he, actor, uh, you know, has, has the ability the worst to pull off some Academy Award career ever. Yep. No, he's, he's about to make a comeback with the the Butler, the Lee Daniels, the Butler. I heard that he's, he's got about to come a good back. Role, yeah, he was in a movie with Tom Berenger, who also should be on this list. Yep, Tom he was Berenger's on the next one on my list. Yeah, uh, uh, killed him. Uh, with snow dogs called a murder of crows. Great movie. If you haven't seen this movie, look it up. It's a great movie. Berenger and Cuba Gooding. Mira so uh, Mira Sovino. Oh yeah, is that a big one? She had a uh, run there for a while, and yeah, she was in that movie with Lisa Kudrow that did real well, and yep. she had her kick-ass stuff that she was, you know, was the badass bitch. And yep, that was pretty much in for her. Yep. Joe Pesci, which I think might be self-imposed. I think that's a retirement kind of thing. He comes in and out every now and then, but yep. But yep. he was also real big for Adrian Brody, another one of the Oscar cursed guys. <laughs> I saw that movie. Yeah, the inappropriate comedy. Oh my God, it's got some funny parts. But it's because they throw so much against the wall, some of it had to stick. And here's another one that actually is getting a... I, I put him on the list, but then I realized he does have a movie coming out that's probably going to be pretty big. But Keanu Reeves kind of mm -hmm. dropped off the face yeah. for a while. But he's he directed a movie, and now he's in a mm -hmm. big budget kung fu looking thing that's coming out, right. I guess, at Christmas or something. But yeah, well, once so. again, he wasn't. he's not relegated to that direct video mode that uh, some of these others, Madsen and Kilmer and Sizemore are. I think he does a lot of picking and choosing, doesn't he? Yeah, probably so. Well, here's some. Here's a. I call him a fringe guy, okay. Ray Liotta. He's n certainly not as big as he used to be, and he'll still show up in a big movie. But man, he has a lot of direct video. Mm -hmm. A and lot you know, of it. And what's really sad is there's a lot of really good actors that are going that route. Now mm -hmm. you got Robert De Niro doing a crap ton of direct video. Yeah. You got Christopher Walken doing a crap ton of direct yeah. video. You got Bruce Willis. Most of his movies are direct video now. Mm -hmm. He still pulls out the occasional Die Hard and Red too, but for the most part. Mm -hmm. straight to video stuff so a lot of these guys just they're getting older they're not getting the roles they used to get so they're they're going for the stuff and, that's going to make them some money and dennis hopper's last few years of his life were miserable as far as the movie movies he was putting out direct yep. video crap oh here's yep. here's the kind of the flip side people that almost went that route because mm -hmm. there are a few that were this close to becoming michael madsen and, and now are still some of the biggest stars in the world ben affleck yeah he had a ben Affleck comeback. had like a five or six year stretch where he was Hollywood poison. Nobody wanted him in anything. Yeah, pretty much the G Lee, uh, J Lo days. That yeah. was pretty much the end for him for a good long while. Yeah, he had a long stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, the aforementioned Julia Roberts. People yeah. forget that after about uh, sleeping with the enemy, she had about a seven year, eight year run of garbage. That yep. Didn't, I mean, they weren't going direct to video, but they weren't making any money. Either. She's still not opening as big as she used to. That, that uh, movie that she had that was a Snow White thing yeah. kind of tanked. But, yeah. Um, She's but, still getting big roles. Yeah, she's landing the big roles. And getting big money. So. Yeah. And then there's the people that almost you know, were let, uh, didn't get as far as Affleck or who uh, Julia Roberts, mm. but people like uh, Dennis Quaid. Mm -hmm. He had a lull, but now he still makes big movies. And You know, there's a few others like that. Um, and you can argue and say that Kevin Costner had that for a while there, Kevin too. Costner did. He was on his way. If it hadn't been for Hatfields and McCoys, he was on his way to being a... Because his... Last movie before that, The New Daughter, was a direct-to-video. His one and only direct-to-video, up since he became a star, anyway. And then, uh, shoot, I just forgot the other person. There's a couple of big ones, though. I'm yeah, just, there I are. I had one I'm on the tip of my tongue, and I just lost it. Just was, Owen Wilson had a spell yeah. where he was gone. Yeah, and, but that was the that's because of the suicide thing. Yeah, but then he came back and did a whole yeah. couple movies, and he's back to Well, Marley and Me got him back going, but he did, like, yeah. Drill Bit Taylor, which I thought was funny, but it didn't do anything at the box office. Midnight yeah. in Paris brought him back. Yeah, that, that helped, did, him, that helped him a lot, a lot yeah. 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 Which was odd, because I didn't think that was going to mesh at all. I was like, I don't think he fits in the movie. And it was great. And a movie I thought was going to work that had him in it, that Bond was uh, that one with Paul Rudd and Reese Witherspoon and Jack Nicholson. Mm -hmm. What the hell is that called? But anyway, it's the highest budget for a comedy ever. Oh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what it's called, yeah. It had like $140 million budget, because it all went towards salaries for this movie. And I think it did $30 million, Big yeah. Bond. But he still lands the big parts. He's got a... Uh, Although that internship bombed yeah. with Vince Vaughn. Big time. That was That's a too big bad. bomb. And you could say Vince Vaughn's right on the fringe of almost yeah. being gone because he's not pulling in the, the you know money that he used no, to. He's, he's not, not pulling in the box office. He's going to have to find something yeah. else to do. Yeah. 
you know. But well, there's a lot of those guys that um, that go away from it and come back as directors and do do great. Ben Affleck's one of them, you know. Mel Gibson's got a big role coming up yep. in uh, the new Expendables. He's the new bad guy. Hopefully, that'll turn his career around. Yes. His last couple of movies have been direct video. I yep. know it's kind of late in the game for, especially for this actor. But Chevy Chase is actually kind of really dropped off. But I mean, he still does like bit parts well, on Community helped community him for a little bit. And, but, uh, he was on Chuck and uh, a couple other things, but uh, not. But he hadn't exactly had you know big roles. No, after, yeah, after what Fletch or something, he dropped off, and the only thing he could do was a vacation movie that would make any money. Which yeah. he's supposed to be in the new one that they're coming out with, I think next year or something. Yeah, I heard he's they're doing a new part one. In that. I wonder if Randy Quaid will be in it. Yeah, I, I would if he can get out of house arrest. <laughs> yeah, supposedly I guess the new dad's going to be um, what's his name from uh, the, the, the son, office? the son, Rusty. Yeah. That's gonna be Rusty. Yeah, the thing. guy, the guy who played Rusty, I think, in um, well, actually, in I, the Vegas vacation, I think he's supposed to play it because there's actually four Rusties. I mean, they never yeah, they hired are. the same guy. Right. Yeah, true, true. Or Audrey. Yeah, it's always a different Audrey. God, there was someone else that I was just. I had one. I had a big one, and it just went right out of my right head. Out of your head. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's a ton of them. Yeah. I mean, but there's there's really a lot. But I mean, I guess it says a lot for your star power if you can hold the reins long enough. To find the right project that'll get you back into the spotlight, Julia Robertson, Ben Affleck, Costner, those guys were able to do it, but it's not a lot of people that are doing it. Yeah. Well, you know, you know who actually had a massive drop off. If you can think about it, uh, Chris Tucker. Well, he, yeah, he, he did a, all the Rush Hour movies yeah, and then but, just plummet. Yeah, he <laughs> was like he'd make twenty million a movie for Rush Hour, and then his movie, salaries for other movies would be like four hundred grand or something. You know, yeah, but he's real. He's oh, one of those guys that's real picky, though. So yeah, he, he only true, does when true. he wants to. He's oh. like, when I need the money, I'll work, and that's it. And, Don't know if this guy was ever big, but he had like a four or five good run movies of movies. Dane Cook, but now he's doing garbage. Yeah, but. Uh, well, he—he, he, I think he concentrated more on his comedy and whatnot, and then which he people, shouldn't do. People stopped finding him funny or <laughs> yeah. something, and yeah, uh, he just plummeted. Well, he made that bad joke about the movie theater shooting. No, oh, did he? I didn't. Hear oh, I never about, actually even heard yeah, that something joke about Batman. Uh, some of the people were probably happy they got shot, so they wouldn't have to finish that movie or something. Oh, it was wow. like you can't say that. Yikes! Wow. Too early. Uh, yeah. Too. Early. It was. It was like the next week. Yeah. It was oh, that wow. soon. Yeah. If you want to, I mean, if you want to wax poetic about it, you could say that, um, you know, uh, what's his name, uh, Nicholas Cage has been in and out oh, yeah. for for years. You I'd know? still put him on the crap list, but he still does land the big stuff every now and then. Yeah, he'll land he the does big stuff. Everything. Another, you put a script in front of him, he does it. Another Nick, Nick Nolte, mm -hmm. uh, was once a huge guy. Yeah, he's he's still getting decent parts every once yeah. in a while. He gets, you know, he gets recognized when he does something. He was in that Warrior movie, right? His so. best role was that uh, mugshot. Yeah, <laughs> the, build, the, build, the build a cat mugshot. Yeah, that was a yeah, God. celebrity mugshots. Man, those are freaking hilarious. Mm -hmm. So you get a chance to look at the Glenn Campbell one. It's almost as bad as the Nick Nolte one. Yeah, God, what's his name? Uh, there's a bunch of them that are just hilarious, man. Robert Downey Jr. Is Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. is a guy that another one that went. He was gone oh, yeah. for a while yeah, after, after Chaplin. Yeah, he just definitely. disappeared. He's, that's the one I was thinking of with yeah. Affleck. Big you know, comeback. Yeah, yeah. Big comeback. Apparently he had to beg for the Iron Man role. He had to and like yeah, actually John. he begged for it, and uh, they brought him into audition. And uh, after he did, they were like, "This is this is who we need." And after that, just yeah, yeah he Fav can't do really really fought for him. He's like, yeah. he is he is Iron Man. He's going to be the best Iron Man you're ever going to get. Yeah, he mm -hmm. did a great job. So yep. yep, and he's the heart and soul of those like all those movies. The Avengers movie wouldn't have worked without him. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Although that movie he made with Galifianakis is terrible. Oh, due date. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've, I've uh, I watched it once, and it's kind of like watch it once, and then uh, just you're forget. You're good. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched half of it, and I was good. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm out. It had some entertaining moments, but that was it. It had moments yeah. like you pretty much could have summed it up in a commercial. Ooh, I got a big one. Hmm. Eddie Murphy. Oh, definitely. You know, he's been responsible for like seven of the ten biggest flops of the last fifteen years. Yep, Pluto, uh, Nash, Pluto Nash, the Adventures uh, of Pluto Nash. And, uh, that was Dave, or what was it called? Yeah, it was called Dave. Dave. No, it was Dave. Dave. Yeah, it was called Dave. Dave. It was well called another huge uh, bomb. What was the one where he was like a monk or something? Hmm. Oh, uh, Holy Man. Holy Man. Holy that Man. Was it. Yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah, he had a bunch of flops. God, and he and, could do no wrong in the eighties. Yep. Just pretty him in the movie alone was a hundred million dollar movie. Pretty much, Vampire in Brooklyn was like that was yeah. pretty much the end for him. It was like that movie, and then everything after that was just. I think even before that, with the with the was that one the Hollywood uh, Harlem, what was uh, it Harlem Nights, Harlem Nights, yeah. Yeah, well, he, that was a critical success, but I don't think it made money. But yeah, well, he, he scored does. okay with the clumps. He did okay money wise there. No, he but, does family movies. He's got like the the 
the daddy daycare type stuff. That pisses me off when an edgy comedian sells out and does the family movie. I'm a huge Steve Martin fan, but come on, Cheaper by the Dozen movies, Father sequels to Father of the Bride. I'm, I did, I liked the first one. The sequel was just garbage. Garbage, yeah. It was a little too you know, much. Come on. If you're an edgy comedian, stay an edgy comedian. A lot of edgy musicians doing the same thing. Like an Ice Cube. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And freaking uh, all those kids' movies, was it? <laughs> Are We There Yet? And all that right. stuff. I mean, God. Did that start with Stallone with Kindergarten Cop? Stallone's a big one. You can no, not say Stallone. That's no, Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. That's what I meant, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. yeah, Stallone fell off the map for a long yeah, time, and now he's back. Schwarzenegger fell off the map, too, but that was, you know, because he was the governor. governor. So. Well, everybody governor like, stop or my mom will shoot. <laughs> yeah, Stallone. man, Stallone and comedies just do not mix. You know, I thought Oscar, Oscar was solid. Oscar was funny. I Oscar liked it, but solid. people did not oh, no, see they hated that movie. It. They hated it. It was a great script. It was a funny script. But and just you really have to pay attention because the yeah. dialogue is real witty, and you got to pay attention to it because it'll have a lot of callbacks to something that was said anytime, earlier. Anytime Tim Curry was on the screen, it was funny. Yep. It was pretty much the way that yep, movie exactly. did. I love it. The last time you saw Tim Curry in something. Yeah. Uh, he does a lot. Of, he does Isn't little he, bit parts here and there. Who am I there. thinking that's dead? No, he's not dead. No, no he's not. Oh, you don't think you're confused with the guy that played uh, Gomez Adams and Adams. Oh, family. yeah, yeah. Oh, God. His last movie was freaking Street uh, Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I always get him and Tim Curry mixed up. God, Raul Julia. Yeah, that's it. Great actor. Horrible last movie. Oh, that's I mean, bad. just horrible. Well, it's like John Candy, Wagons East was his yeah. last one, and it's like, really? Yeah. Because he was on a high, he'd done cool runnings, and had gotten big, great reviews, made a lot of money, he does Wagons East, and dies. Yeah. Uh. And cool runnings was the first time he really saw something like, oh, he could possibly be a dramatic actor, uh -huh. maybe need to do some of that later, mm -hmm. and then just gone. Yeah. What about Uncle Buck? I mean, he played a pretty serious... I mean, there was a lot, there was of, comedy, a lot of comedy, of course. But had, there was moments. But yeah, those solid family, you know... Well, he could always show heart. He could, oh, yeah. he could always yeah. show his heart real well, which oh, a yeah. great comedian can do that. Exactly, yeah. And you could say Robin Williams has trailed off. I mean, he's... Uh -huh. Oh, he's doing, in a lot of direct-to-video stuff. Doing TV now, so... Yeah. You can kind of tell that's when their careers are... When they're pretty much done. Well, going, going back to, to Lee Daniels, the butler, he's going to be in that. He plays... Um, Eisenhower? No, not Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. You know, he plays one of the presidents. Really? He plays an ex-president. Yeah, um... Did they pay an event to this movie? That's the third time you've mentioned it. I, I feel like it. I'm starting <laughs> to feel like it. It's just, I, I actually really want to go see it. So, uh, <laughs> it looks, it looks, it looks, it looks good. good. So, uh, I kind of like the depictions of the presidents, although I find it funny that they you know, kept getting Canadian and British actors to play American presidents. Yeah. So, yeah. so. They're more believable. <laughs> <laughs> But there was a TV show similar to this Butler thing. It was, it was a miniseries in the early 80s. I remember watching it. I can't remember what it was called, but it was about a maid who... Uh, Benson? Was it Benson? He was a butler. <laughs> this is a maid, and it was her going through like Woodrow Wilson all the way up. I think Kennedy was her last president. I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. It was a great movie. I can't remember what it was called. Maybe someone will correct us. Or not correct us. Inform us. Hmm. I can't. Think of what that was. Was it a black maid? Was yes. it Cicely yes, Tyson, it was. maybe? Yeah, it was. Hmm. And it was kind of showing how the different presidents treated her. Yeah. And it was a good movie. Yeah. And so, this butler reminds me of that movie. Yeah. It does look like a good movie, though. It looks mm -hmm. like it's going to have a, a, a great screenplay and a lot of heart. We'll see what it does. Okay, Fox back to Ezra Zion. It's smoothed out, but the flavor is still off the charts. I am smoking it fast. Yeah. It's got a lot of smoke. Yeah. It's yummy. Mm-hmm. Almost went out on me a couple of times, but um, that just may have been me. That talking. was me talking. Yeah. I had to relight mine. It's definitely getting a, a little spicier in the last third. Um, got a yeah, lot it of, smoothed out for a while, and now it's getting a little picking up. Yeah. Yeah. The second, yeah, the second third was a little a lot. It was a lot milder than the first third, but it's definitely picking up in the spice on the last third. I'm getting a lot of leather and spice, and mm. I'd say the spice is more like a wouldn't really call it a pepper, mm -hmm. but just kind of a cayenne i guess or i don't know yeah, mild cayenne but yeah cayenne. and uh we're still drinking the o shot irish stout thanks davis this is good stuff i'm glad you enjoy it guys appreciate I'm, it uh, i'm enjoying being on the show uh and uh talking with you guys well now you gotta go back and listen to others or i know like i this might week. i Maybe. might it's you just, might <laughs> it's a fun way it's a fun way to you know what i do is i'll put on youtube videos you know like fails and stuff like that so i don't have to hear the noise and yeah. watch those and listen to our podcast sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's called research. we got to listen to our stuff yeah, and see what worked and what didn't work. In case we have to call back to a past episode or something. Yeah, I always figure it's kind of kind of fun being here because of those stupid conversations we have sitting over in the corner there just uh, talking. Uh, what was that last one we had? Uh, you know, top five actors or actresses or something you'd uh, you'd like to meet, you know, and hang out oh, yeah. with for a day and have a yeah. drink or whatever. Yeah. That was a good... Yeah, this kind of reminds me of that. I, I like it. It's a lot of fun. Well, we've been complimented on the show feeling like 
they're sitting around talking with us and that uh, we create that environment. And that's, that's a very pleasant thing to hear from people. Yep, that's what we like to do. We want it to feel like you're sitting at the B&M just hanging out with us smoking a cigar. And we try and tell people a week of week ahead what we're going to be smoking so that they can possibly find it. So when's your next... Uh, when you gonna when you get done with this, you're gonna make some more. Or you're gonna start working uh, well, on the no, next I've batch. No, I've already now, I've already officially uh, made the next batch. It's uh, currently sitting in the the bucket at home, uh, sitting in my closet, <laughs> um, fermenting. And uh, I was going to bottle it today, but I needed uh, some bottles, and I didn't want to have to drink, you know, eight beers, uh, and then not be able, and then wouldn't even be able to bottle it. You know? <laughs> be, so this is four. Sure. Where are the other? Is there four more for us? Uh, there's uh, there's <laughs> a there's a chunk uh, at home right now. I think I only needed. Uh, four actually, and I just brought a six pack with me today, uh, just because I wanted everybody to try it. Um, but the next one's going to be the. Uh, uh, I haven't quite decided, but uh, I, I know that the the autocorrect was I tried to um, tell a friend that they needed to get their ass up to Dallas, and it corrected it and said, "Get your ads up to Dallas." <laughs> so this is uh, going to be like the the, the fat ads. the fat ads or the the big ads um, IPA. <laughs> Big ads IPA. You're making an IPA. I love IPAs. That's those are hard to make though, aren't they? Uh, not excessively. They're actually uh, fairly easy to make. Um, it's just a matter of uh, I stupidly did not have a strainer, and so I had to manage to pour the beer into the bucket um, without getting uh, tons of hop sediment yeah. in the bottom of all of my bottles. <laughs> so uh, hopefully I did that right. I definitely left a, a decent chunk of sediment in the uh, the boiling pot, but uh, I think it uh, I think it'll turn out real well. Added uh, a lot of malt, so it should be nice and nice and thick. Have a lot of body to it. Uh, but uh, we're gonna see how it turns out. I'm really I'm really excited about it because I love IPAs. I love what those are, nice citrusy your, IPAs. What are some of your favorite IPAs? Uh, my personal favorite, absolutely 100%, is the uh, Dogfish Head. A uh, 90 minute IPA, and That's a lot a of people one. really want to go for the 120 minute. And I think that, uh, and while I like it, uh, I think the 90 minutes better because it's a little lighter in alcohol. Because um, the 120 minute almost resembles a scotch. It's got a real strong, like like it's sat in barrels, mm -hmm. uh, like wood barrels for a long time. And uh, and it, while it's got a good flavor, I think that nice citrusy flavor of the 90 minute. Uh, it's something you want to sit on your patio in, in Texas heat and drink, and it'll it'll cool you off. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Oh, yeah. Our first Connecticut. Our first Connecticut. Oh, which one? We're gonna do the La Plena Classic Lancero. Oh, so, nice Lancero. Yeah, awesome. So we've done a Connecticut or a Lancero. So this will be our first Lancero review. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I love La Plena's. I mm -hmm. have the Kill Bill and the Kill Bill Two, and yeah. they're great. So this will be one. Have you had it already? Yeah. Okay, I haven't had it yet. So it'll be a new it'll be yeah. new for me. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. So we are coming to the end of our podcast today, episode twenty six. Do you remember how to say it in Swahili again? Ishirini Uncita. Ah, Swahili. So give us a recommendation for next next week, twenty seven, maybe Japanese or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Japanese. <laughs> but uh, the shout out that we mentioned earlier, Richard Trotter is from Kaufman, which is in the Dallas area, but it's a long ways from here. He's not a shopper, I don't think, because he was not in our point of sale when I looked. But okay. he could always stop by. He could, because we're at 1401 East Arapahoe Road in Richardson, Texas. And if anybody wanted to call and order some of these as resign, how would they do that? 972-761-9903. You can hear us on Potomatic, Spreaker, YouTube, with the video slideshow of Hot Ladies and the Cigar. You get to see what the cigar looks like. Go on our Facebook page and like us. And anytime you like us or com comment, we will give you a shout out. And, uh, and we the, well, do want to mention that we have a couple people that have been commenting pretty regular and uh, you know following the show. And we're actually going to send them out a couple of cigars. Yes, surprise cigar bombs for a couple of listeners. So it's uh, more incentive for you guys to make those comments. And uh, definitely, if you give us a uh, a comment on iTunes, give us a rating, um, you know, a good rating on there. That helps us move up the list there, so more people can find us. We very much appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So don't forget to add us on iTunes where you can set it and then you get it every week automatically. Absolutely. And I know a lot of people do that. They'll get it on Sunday and listen to it at work on Monday. So yep. great way to make the day go by, listen to some podcasts. Absolutely. And hopefully you were smoking along with us with this Ezra Zion. And if you want to do that next week, pick you up a La Palina Classic La Lancero. Our first Connecticut review and our first Lancero review. So this ought to be fun. To that. Yeah, it's going to be yummy. So first off, I want to thank... I'm glad to hear you enjoyed your beer. <laughs> yeah. So first off, I want to thank Davis. Uh, thanks. I can't even talk thanks, now. Thanks, Davis. We want to thank Davis <laughs> Howell from Autocorrect Brewery. For the O-Shot delicious beer that he brought us. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh-huh. And as always, Brandon, what's your line? It's been great smoking with you. See you next time.